But now let's talk with Sam Lloyd. Sam, I'm so happy that you're able to be a guest on the show. And as you spoke about um, the struggles that busy, productive, talented people have with getting those messages from God, I wondered if you had an example in your own life managing this complex and remarkable institution of the cathedral. How does, how does God get your attention? What's your brick? It's almost never planned. Mm -hmm. And it's always never on my calendar. It's always something that happens when, lo and behold, in the midst of a busy day, a school child will come running up the aisle of the cathedral. Or I'm off to a meeting across town to do some planning for some advocacy work and someone stands up and speaks and a whole window opens into the struggle she's having to hold her life together amidst enormous challenges and complexity. I find that my calendar doesn't leave much room for God to break in, but what I find is a God who is relentless in insisting on breaking in and it's my job to keep my eyes open and pay attention. Mm. Well, Sam, could you speak to us a little bit more about the National Cathedral? I think a lot of us see it on television occasionally f for different events and have one perception of it, but there's a lot that goes on there. Maybe speak about the mission and, sure. and your perception of it for us and for our viewers. Sure, of course, the, the, the joy and honor of the, of the National Cathedral is that we are there for the nation. We're the nation's spiritual home in so many ways, and we certainly are there for the nation in times of crisis and celebration. But there is a lot more going on there. We are absolutely committed to using the honor and privilege of being where we are to be a voice of thoughtful, generous-spirited Christian faith, the kind of faith that welcomes and honors all the religious traditions. We both want to be a specifically Christian place, but to live it in a deeply gracious way for all the spiritual tradition, traditions of our country. So interfaith dialogue is important. We offer forums and talks and symposia all the time to let people experience what I think is, can often be very scarce these days, a thoughtful, intellectually alive, spiritually rich Christian faith, the kind that 30 Good Minutes is offering <laughs> itself. It's our job to offer that from that tremendous platform for the nation. And then, of course, we're out in the city making a difference. We have a congregation growing and thriving there. But our big work is to use that platform to hold out the depths and riches of this vibrant Christian faith we're committed to. And yet, remarkably, it's on the one hand the National Cathedral, but on the other hand it has a specific Episcopal identity. You know, it's an Episcopalian gift to the country, is it not? That's right. It, it, uh, it is an Episcopal Cathedral. It's, it's the home of the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church. But we see that as, as our, our base, our uh, defining who we are so that we can then throw the doors open and the ways we worship and the ways we invite people to make sure everybody feels that, that, that they are welcome there. So, you know, on a Sunday morning, we have people absolutely from around the world by the hundreds from around the country, from every faith tradition you can imagine, and we are careful to welcome them and tell them how delighted we are that they're there, invite them to some coffee and refreshments mm -hmm. after, and say, this is your home too, and we want them to sense that it is a home for everyone. I had the pleasure of experiencing that hospitality once as a tourist myself, and when I was there, you had guest choirs from around the country. Do you do that often? We do. We want to make sure that uh, that periodically, we have our own wonderful uh, choir music program there, but we want to make sure that, the, that the, the riches of the nation are there. And so we do invite choirs to come in. And we're very careful on big public occasions, uh, uh, public occasions that those are interfaith choirs. We want to make sure we, we present the richness of the city of Washington, D.C., musically, all the different traditions, but also of our country. We want to make sure all those voices get offered in that great space. And Sam, the, the reality of a, the political situation this day, there's a lot of partisanship that happens. How does the church minister to that in the midst of a very difficult situation in Washington, D.C., and the politics and the, and the life of our country? We've tried very hard, Daniel, to, to offer a, a context for civil conversation. The uh, main example I would give is every Sunday at 10 a.m. between the two big services, we have a, uh, a forum that is all about a conversation at the intersection of faith and public life. And we invite a range of fascinating speakers week by week. And I interview them for about an hour. It's webcast. Uh, we, we take questions from around the country sometimes on the webcast. It's archived for people to go and see themselves. 
But we're trying to model a way of bringing people from across the political spectrum and the theological spectrum to come in, and, I, and I, um, I'm the host, and it's a very sympathetic interview. I want them to bring the gifts they have to give. And the questions are, by and large, very respectful, and we've, we've had them from a, across all the hot issues of the day, trying to model a way for us to honor each other and the perspectives people bring, while also being able to disagree uh, quite, quite strongly. So that's one example, but in, in, uh, we have, we're, we're having a major conference on American foreign policy with political leaders from across the spectrum, journalists, uh, religious leaders, to show that in this nation's spiritual home, that kind of conversation belongs. As a final concluding thought, some people will say about the rancor and the nasty tone of political discourse, well, that's just politics. How would you respond to that? I'd say that's not good enough. Mm -hmm. Of course, politics is always going to entail a rancor and strong d disagreement. But it, it often and has come to the point of breaking down the possibility of finding common ground and working together. And part of what we're trying to do is model a way to discover and claim and relish the gift of common ground. And to take one's faith into all aspects of your public life. The faith is to be lived out in every dimension of our lives, and we're trying to help people do that. Well, we're very thankful for you sharing your story today and your message about looking for our Africa. It's a powerful challenge to each of us to respond to, and it, I, I know it takes uh, great thought from each of us in that regard. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Daniel. Thanks, Lord.